Welcome back to TIT. Today we have a riveting set of cases that you're not going to want to miss. We have solved the case of who watches this. <laughs> we did. Actually, we got a lot of positive comments on the last episode. Many positive comments saying, please continue doing this. I like this better than the regular show. Mm-hmm. But we determined that to be a lie. We did. Because there's not a lot of positive viewership. <laughs> yes. Just positive comments. Positive comments. Which we love. Yes. So, so keep leaving those. Thank but you. also view it. Yes. View it. Buick. It's a kink. Yeah, that's what it is. We fucking solved it. Welcome to the CMG investigation team. So, we have a lot of gray cases today. We do. <laughs> And uh, this first one here, why don't you um, why don't you read this? This is a very, very interesting one. This involves it's actually kind of piggybacks off our um, the flight conversation we were having a, a few episodes ago. Yes, of the normal show. Yes. Um, do you want to read this? It's the mysterious case of the D. B. Cooper disappearance. And for those unfamiliar, D. B. does not stand for duck butter. <laughs> duck butter cooter is what they called my <laughs> sister that's what i call her <clears throat> i wouldn't know that's just the rumor i heard from her husband who she killed <laughs> maybe we should get into that case <laughs> it's solved she's in prison for life <laughs> stabbed him right in his penis cut it right down the middle like a hot dog it filled not with quite, blood. Not quite to the bottom. Not quite so to the it's bottom. Split open nicely. When she filled it with it, sauerkraut. When she spilled it down the middle, a bunch of blood filled it, and she says, "How does it feel to have ketchup in your cooter?" Mm. He passed out. That and was he died. Gross. That was gross. Yeah. Well, God forbid she ever gets out. You're next. Me? <laughs> no, just someone. <laughs> you, proverbial. The D.B. Cooper hijack is a, <laughs> you know, that's what they used to call it. What? It wasn't the Mile High Club. It was the hijack club. <laughs> but then this guy happened and they had to change it. D.B. Cooper hijacked a plane. Let me tell you how he did it. A day before Thanksgiving in 1971, a man calling himself Dan Cooper boarded Northwest Airlines flight number 305 in Portland bound for Seattle. He was wearing a dark suit and a black tie. While in the air, he opened his briefcase, showing a bomb to the flight attendant and hijacked the plane. The plane landed in Seattle where he demanded 200,000 in cash, four parachutes, and food for the crew before releasing all the passengers. With only three pilots and one flight attendant left on board, they took off from Seattle with the marked bills heading south while it was dark and lightly raining. In the 45 minutes after takeoff, Cooper sent the flight attendant to the cockpit while donning the parachute, tied the bank bag full of $20 bills to himself, lowered the rear stairs, and somewhere north of Portland jumped into the night. When the plane landed with the stairs down, they found the two remaining parachutes and on the seat Cooper was sitting in a black tie. Jets, a helicopter, and a C-130 aircraft had been scrambled from the Closet Air Force Base. The closest. Closet Air Force Base. Because <laughs> remember, the Air Force is gay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Navy. The no. The Navy is gay as well. 
That's just what men in service tell me. <laughs> That's what the guys kissing each other in the army told me. They scrambled a C-130, a helicopter, and jets from the closest Air Force base to follow Cooper's plane, and when they couldn't find his plane, they shot up his house. Oh, wow. <laughs> The military was called in days after the hijacking and approximately 1,000 troops. Come on, man. This guy's not that cool. Search for the suspected jump zone on foot and in helicopters. The SR-71. This is a lie. Super secret spy plane was sent in to photograph the entire flight path, but no sign of D.B. Cooper, Cooper was ever discovered. I like his name's Dan, but he yeah. goes by D.B. Like, it's harder to say than Dan. Yeah. Why would you do that? Dan is formal. DB is for the boys. Yeah, yeah, Dan, Dan boy. Yeah, Dan boy. <laughs> it's Dan boys. Yeah. Cooper. Yeah. Nine years later, in 1980, just north of Portland on the it's Columbia Dan River. Boys, Cooper. <laughs> it's Dan boys. Cooper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's Dan boys. Good to meet you, Cooper. By the way, a, a young boy was digging a fire pit in the sand at a place called Tina Bar. He'd, he uncovered three bundles of cash a couple inches below the surface. There was a total of $5,800. The Cooper serial numbers matched, and the first evidence since 1971 came to light. However, the man himself and his true identity remain a mystery to this day. <laughs> he was buried just beside the cash. <laughs> <laughs> he just buried yeah. himself. <laughs> yeah, he died next to the money. <laughs> he, his shoe did not fall. Yeah, he yeah. just fucking... <laughs> <laughs> he went <laughs> into the ground. Three layer, three feet yeah. deep into the yeah, soil. like a cartoon. <laughs> yeah, the FBI closed its case on Cooper in 2009 without ever having solved it. Luckily, Tid is here to reopen the case. Who was DB Cooper? Why take on a crime of this magnitude? Where did he end up? Did he survive the jump? Well, let's get one thing straight. In 1971, there is no TSA. Is there not? No, there's not. You're right. Not the way we got it. Yeah, that's true. Those motherfuckers just walked onto the plane. Yeah. Yeah. Secondly, um, damn, that's crazy. Yeah. Y if you wanted to bring a bomb on a plane, you could just do it. Well, what's even funnier then is I don't think there was a ton of general knowledge. Because remember, that was like a big thing. That was a big deal with Google. What? You can search how to make a bomb. Mm hmm You know? That was. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So that dude could have just walked on there with a briefcase with an alarm clock in it. Oh, you're saying it wasn't even a real bomb? It could yeah, probably, probably was not. No. No. Yeah. That's such a hilarious, like, cartoonish way to be like, ah! Yeah. Just like a, bun a bundle of fucking TNT. Yeah. You know, just a bunch of red candles. <laughs> yeah. Just wrapped together with a bunch yeah, of strap. Yeah, exactly. Ah! And they're like, oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, so. This I is a nuclear bomb. Yeah. <laughs> oh, heavens. Is that a nuclear bomb? Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's how we did. Actually, this I, is this is the definitely the coolest case that we've reviewed thus far. Yeah, like DB Cooper is kind. Of, you can see why his name is DB. He's a fucking legend. Yeah, a legend. This guy let all the passengers off the plane. He endangered nobody. Yeah, everyone survived. Yeah, and he was never found. Dick Big Cooper. And who did he rob? The airline. That's awesome. Yeah. He, he they landed in Seattle and he demanded 200k in cash. So where did the cash come from? That's that's when airlines kept cash in the airport. That's when they took your money without shame. Yeah, it's true actually. People used to buy but, tickets with cash. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And so he he robbed an airline, something that we all hate. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Especially fucking Northwest. Yeah. What is that even? Yeah, if it's anything like Southwest, it sucks. Can we, I think Did they just used to name these based on the direction they I was, went. I was, that's what I was thinking when I was reading it. Yeah, I guess right. Just one for each fucking way. Every, no, we don't go south. <laughs> we don't. Once our once our planes land, we don't go back. Yeah, that was that, everything was like a cartoon then. Yeah, <laughs> I think I'll take the east west plane. <laughs> the east west. Well, it goes back and the forth. The eastern west plane. The eastern west and back west again. <laughs> Yeah, so that's how he did it. You could. It's just an awesome crime. I can't believe he got away with it. Yeah, and then yeah. and then as if it wasn't cool enough, he dipped on a parachute into the night mm. and probably died. Honestly, like all things considered, he probably fucking died. Yeah, let's which think. is the coolest part of it all. Would 
Do you think it's it was possible for someone to be good at skydiving back then? Yeah, no, probably not. I mean, the TNT was fake. His yeah. parachute was probably fake too. You know? Did he take the briefcase no, with t- him? Uh, yeah, he did. No, he taped the the bills to himself. What do you mean the briefcase did with he the, bomb? the bomb? I don't know. It's a good question. I don't have good reading comprehension. <laughs> I'm struggling to remember who did this. <laughs> uh, D.B. Cooper. Dick Big Cooper, right? <laughs> Dick Big, exactly. Dick Big Cooper. <laughs> Is that his sketch? And he was wearing those sunglasses. That just looks like time. every white guy before 62. <laughs> yeah, it really does. This could be a CIA agent. This could have been your father. Yeah. This could have been a mechanic. Agent Smith. Yeah. Wait, can you look up when skydiving was invented? He probably fucking invented it. They'd probably never seen someone jump out of a plane before. Actually, I think the Japanese invented it, but... There's a lot of theories that he was like ex-military because of the way he requested certain types of uh, parachutes, and um, there's been over a few hundred suspects. And oh, yeah, actually, yeah. What am I talking about, dude? Paratroopers? Yeah. Duh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We definitely had some of that in. Oh yeah, yeah in, for sure. In Dub Dub too. Yeah. But he invented we parachuting can, out of a crime. We can claim Dub. On World War Two, because we're a Canadian. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, this is so. What are oh, we? Look at this. Look at this. We... Look at this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We have more details. Was Cooper an experienced skydiver? He requested front and back parachutes. Oh, this guy's a hoe. <laughs> He wanted to be sandwiched by parachutes. Oh, this! Guy. I want to be. I want to be the meat in a parachute sandwich. This guy's a little freak. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm a little piece of deli meat. Oh, I want to get it blown out from the front and the back. Okay. Smush me. He requested Smush front and back me. parachutes. I'm a little panini. He turned down and. St- <laughs> I'm a paranini. Nice. He turned down instructions on how to use the parachute. Equals experience. <laughs> Look at this analysis right here. He requested front and back parachutes. Novice. He turned down instructions on how to use the parachute. Experienced. He picked up the non-steerable military parachute. Novice. Novice. The military chute could better withstand the exit speed of the plane. Experienced. Experienced. He put the parachute on like he knew what he was doing. Experienced. Experienced. He took the reserve chute that was sewn, closed, and non-functional. Equals novice. Debate factor. And then he uh, fell to his death. Novice. Hmm. (laughs) Expert. (laughs) Expert. Yeah, he died expertly. Expertly death. Um, did Cooper die in the jump? It is a huge public debate if Cooper died in the jump or not. (laughs) Experience. A huge public debate as of when? Yeah. uh, On what forums? Yeah. You know, who's... Maybe in 1971, that was the news for like four months. Yeah, exactly, yeah. They didn't have shit going yeah, on yeah. besides, you know... Families around the dinner table. They... I think he died. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, you hear about those men taking acid and fucking each other in the park? <laughs> <laughs> Experienced skydivers say he would have died if it was his first jump, but if he was an expert, no problem. Okay. One experienced parachute... Wait, wait, hold on. What an analysis. Yeah, seriously. Um, he... If he's never done it before, he probably would have died. But if yeah. he knew, knew what he's doing, if he didn't pull the shoot, chances are he died. If he pulled the shoot, though, chances are he probably ex- yeah he lived. If he's done this before, chances are he was good. Yeah. <laughs> One experienced parachutist is that what they're called? Parachutist. <laughs> Anyways, the cold weather may or may not have killed him in the woods, even if he landed okay. That would be, that would suck. Oh my god, dude, you pull off this incredible heist and then you just slowly freeze to death. Like, oh, it's minus ten. <laughs> this shit sucks ass. You just die like that. Yeah. Damn. 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 No body or parachute was found. Okay, let's look at this then. The Tena Bar money. Tina Bar. So why would he have Buried $5,800. Well, it was discovered 20 miles away from the town of Ariel, Washington, where the drop zone analysis completed. That's where they said he jumped. So in order to get the money on the onto Tina Bar, several theories are in play. First is the washigal washdown theory. 
based on the idea that the money had to wash, what the hell, had to wash first down smaller rivers. Okay, so the the topography is that for this money to have ended up where it was discovered, yeah, to get there, I guess it would have been a lot. <laughs> Just a bag of money going down a bunch of small rivers <laughs> and not one person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was the national population of America in 1971? Let's think about that. Why? Because if there's less people, could have got away with more. True. You know what I mean? Yeah. The po- total population of the United States in 1971 was about... 207 million. 207 million. Can you divide 207 million by... 50 states. We're just doing an average. Damn, this is really some tit math right now. This is just this is just some like general okay. Yeah, but this is not going to represent like northern Portland. No, it's but it's pretty rural area. I'm just saying on average, if you got 4 million people ish per state. Okay. Think about how congested LA is yeah. and we got like, I don't know, 60 million people living here in LA? No, it's like 6. Is it? It's something. Oh, that's high. like three. No, it's higher. It's higher. Oh, is it? It's oh, you're thinking Greater Los it's Angeles close to like area. Nine, greater, yeah. yeah. Greater is nine. Something like that. Yeah, it's four. Oh, that's that's Portland. So what are you saying? Like someone would have noticed that bag of money. Well, they're like they're saying like uh, yeah yeah. So I'm I'm log- I'm reasoning that it's actually feasible. Something wild like that could happen. Because there just simply were not enough people nutted out. Yeah. <laughs> and just around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, to go, money! Yeah, yeah. So. No, but the crazier thing is him landing, getting near a car or something, getting in the car, yeah. driving somewhere to safety yeah. with a massive bag of money, yeah. 200K, and $20 bills, too. Is that what they said? That's a pretty crucial detail. Because that's not a hundred... That's not... It was strapped to his chest... Uh, 200k and 20 dollar bills would be a massive bag yeah true so how did he get did he have a car stashed did he know where he was gonna jump if this dude is ex-military paratrooper yeah yeah he can get to this dude can eat crickets and bugs and sticks and know know where to get he know he solved dude so what what solve 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 what are we solving though this is like, are, was this the coolest crime ever? Yes. Yeah. Solved. Yeah. Um, Who was D.B. Cooper, the man? Why take on a crime of this magnitude? Because he could. Because he could, and it's fucking awesome. Where did he end up? He's free. Did he survive the jump? Yes. No, he didn't. He died. Can you look Problem up an SR 71 real quick? Case solved. Can I just make sure I'm thinking of the right plane? Can you pull up an SR 71? Yeah, they broke out one of these. Yeah, which incredible. Get the fuck out of here, bro. That that costs. They actually that called, cost. dude. They actually called Batman to come figure <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, seriously, this stupid ass shit. And he left. He left a little cash for someone to find years later. That's just that's just chair, nice. I think he felt bad about how expensive this yeah. was to taxpayers. You know what I'm saying? Oh, the anarchist cookbook. First published in 1971. Is a book containing instructions for the manufacture. Oh, my God. Huh. That was published in 1971? How many months before this? That's actually really interesting. Wait, was that... Did you just put that together? Yeah. Maybe you should join us on here, Luke. <laughs> that's that's better detective work than we've done all season. <laughs> Damn. So I mean, oh, also, it came out also, in January. Jan- uh, yeah, dude. There was a lot of like New Year, New Bomb. Yeah, there was also a lot of controversy over this book, right? Yes. So like, <laughs> he probably didn't even build the bomb. He just knew that everyone was talking about the fact that there's a bomb recipe out there now. Ah, uh, he so he's pulled up. And was like, on- I did it. Yeah, like he did it. He definitely did it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> everyone with fucking just shit ass education just. <laughs> <laughs> just reading all those chemicals, like, I have no idea what this does. Yeah. I thought cocaine fixed everything. Actually, was gen- was education decent in the 70s? Yeah. Is that when um, baby boomers went to college and then they all got rich and then they were like, 
Uh, college should be a million dollars now. Uh-huh. <laughs> By the way, DB Cooper, there's a there's a chance he's still alive. Just and I w- I just want to put this out there if you'd like to come on the show. Yeah, I think stat- I think the statute of limitations is I think it's is well over. well over. So, uh, if you want to discuss this, we'd love to be we'd love to break that story. Actually, DB Cooper is a psyop, and he was the beginning of the Patriot Act. Oh, he yeah. was the precursor to nine eleven. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see. Yeah, so. He's actually a CIA agent, and from doing this episode, we're actually going to get shot in our sleep. So maybe we don't want him on the show? I think we still want him on the okay, show. Okay, yeah. <laughs> he comes in with a bomb. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just like I did in the <laughs> old days. All right, now you fuckers, give me all these cameras. Give me all these cameras, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, next up, we have this story. It's called The Death of Henry Snyder. Ooh. Chem professor Henry Snyder were discovered dead in a were was discovered dead in a Bryce Hall laboratory. Bryce Hall. <laughs> <laughs> the plot thickens. Josh Richards then disposed <laughs> of the body behind the back of the hype house. <laughs> <laughs> Who's a girl from the hype house? <laughs> yeah. I don't know any. Uh, fucking Charlie D'Amelio, wasn't she? Oh, yeah. yeah. Charlie and Dixie were then found <laughs> pouring cyanide all over the remains. <laughs> they said, our father has barrels we can put the bones in. <laughs> Damn. Then Mr. D'Amelio showed up with a giant barrel shoving the bones in like a madman. <laughs> he said, ah, tape this thing fucking good. He threw it in the back of a brand new Rivian, a sponsored model. It's actually the D'Amelio model, which is set to release in 2025. (laughs) He drove out to the LA River. There were many, many witnesses, but he said, get the fuck out of my way. Anyway, is this the guy in the, is this the guy in the, in the truck that drove through the flower festival too? Yeah. That guy kind of looks like, their dad, Mark D'Amelio, or yeah, whatever. That's how he's getting off. Yeah, in the case. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that him? I missed a D'Amelio. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> oh my God, my daughter's a huge fan of your daughters. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's get to the real case. Professor of Chemistry Henry Snyder became one of University of Miami's most popular faculty members. Professor Snyder owed his notoriety in no small part to his wife Minnie. Minnie was his total opposite, a slender, seductive woman who delighted in exotic dress and fancied herself a great singer. To display Minnie's talents to the fullest, the Snyders hit upon the device of the lecture recital, in which a lecture lecture by the professor would be followed by a musical performance by his wife. Minnie also performed her classical repertoire without her husband, sometimes accompanied by her own band. In August 1989, Henry Snyder fell ill with what was called... 1898, heat- dude. What did I say? <laughs> 1989. Yeah, sorry. 1898. That's a big-ass difference. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if a lecture recital would work in 1998. No. Yeah. Or 1989? What did I 1989? say? What did I say originally? 1989. 1989. Yeah. It's this guy got Taylor Swift on the mind, you know? Yeah. Just I can't stop thinking about her. 1998? 89, that's when she was born. Got it's it. an album, my Got favorite it. album by her. By her. But not your favorite album. No. No, we're close. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to be clear. Just want to be clear for any potential Swifty in the crowd. It is not. No, we're close. No, not we're even close. in my top 10. Yeah. It's a great album. It's though. not even the top 1,000. It's a great it's album. It's a great album. If you are deaf. In August of 1898, Henry Snyder fell ill with what was called heat prostration. He- what? Is that a hot prostate? Yeah. <laughs> is that what heat that is? Prostration. No, and- I think that's just when you fart. <laughs> <Okay>. Nice. <laughs> I have heat prostration. Heat prostration. <laughs> and when he returned to campus the following month, he was clearly not himself. On September 14th, Professor Snyder ingested a fatal dose of potassium cyanide in his Bryce Hall laboratory. This is just a lab where he studies Bryce Hall. (laughs) Yeah, the invention of Bryce Hall. Yeah. Bryce Hall was actually uh, created by academia. 
Yeah, this yeah. guy. Bryce Hall, it, was, it took a hundred. It took a hundred and forty years to develop Bryce Hall. <laughs> Most observers at the time felt the professor had committed suicide. Later, many would assert that her husband's health and mental equilibrium had been broken by overwork. But there is more to the Snyder story. Mm. Sometime after Henry's death, many many remarried. Uh oh. Tying the knot with young William Pugh. Pugh had <laughs> William Pube. Pube, yeah. Pugh had frequently accompanied Minnie's numbers on his guitar. He had also he had also been Professor Snyder's laboratory assistant and possessed, like the professor, a background in chemistry and knowledge of poisons. Oh. The Pubes moved moved to Columbus, Ohio, apparently set to live happily ever after. But in a rambling 1926 letter to Miami President Raymond Hughes. Mrs. Pugue stated that William had walked away, being tired of married life in June 1919, and left her virtually destitute. From all indications, William Pugue was never seen nor heard from again after June 1919. Was Henry Snyder's death the suicide of a despondent man, an accidental self-poisoning by a stressed-out scholar, or do circumstances suggest something more sinister? Did Minnie know or suspect more than what she than what she was willing to tell. And what about the mysterious Mr. Pube? Dude, men before 1999 were just walking out. Walking out of what? That's just the story of all this shit. Oh, they just leave. A man they... came and did something and then he left. Was never to be seen yeah, again. I know, seriously. Yeah, you could just you could just walk. You could just Go. Ne- you could just, if you wanted to be never be found, you could just do that. Yeah, you go to another city. And yeah, it's just over. yeah. All you had to do is walk for like three hours, and you would never be found. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, I mean, I it's think h- I would have never be found today. I mean, it's hilarious to get in a car that can only do fifty miles an hour. <laughs> just drive eight hours somewhere, and, yeah. and you're like, I would like to work sales. Uh, yeah, I'm they're a like, new man. They're like, what's your name? Bryce Hall. Yeah, Bryce. Yeah. And then that's it. Yeah, and, that, and then you just are that. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone at home's like, I don't know what the fuck happened to him. Did he die? No, he just was never to be found. We never found him. That's sick. That's fucking sick. You can just walk out of everything. Yeah. Could you imagine if I was just never to be found? No, I no. I mean, could you imagine that would if- suck. If you, we build this whole thing, and I'm just never. never to be <laughs> <laughs> so Fucking six years into this yeah. shit, never to be found. Gone. What we're happened? Like, when, what happened like, to Noel? <laughs> we went to his house. His car is. He was never gone. Never to be found. Never to be found. You couldn't do that now. What do you mean? You couldn't find him? No, no. Never did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> never could. Yeah. You couldn't do that now. If you tried to never to be found, no, no, no. all it takes is a close person to be on TikTok like, I haven't seen, and then it goes viral, <laughs> yeah, and then they're yeah, just dude. filming random people, and yeah, then dude. before you know it, you are to be found. Oh, yeah. you Yeah. Oh, it, within fucking three hours yeah. of you never to be found, yeah. there'd be a fucking picture of you mm-hmm. at a gas station somewhere. Yeah. You know, like the picture of Harry Styles with the buzz cut? No, I haven't seen it. Ugh. Just so funny. He's a white supremacist now. Yeah, dude, skinhead. Unbelievable. Yeah, that's a new case. <laughs> the case of Harry Styles browsing 4chan. <laughs> he's on poll, and he's like, "I kind of agree." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like all these clever slurs they've come up with. <laughs> that's not how he sounds. Where's he from? I don't know where he's from. Ireland, I think. No, he's not Irish. No, he's English. Oh, I'm thinking of Niall. He's, he's from London. Oh, so he's posh? Yeah. Yeah, so I quite like these slurs they've come up with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do think I'll shave my head. I do like the way they speak about these people. But you didn't see the picture of him? No. In the stadium? No. It's just funny because like... Wait, did this... You know he just tried to like absolutely keep that the most secret you could ever keep anything. Oh, yeah? And like somebody got this... Oh, Actually, wow. he doesn't really look like he's being that careful. Yeah, he's kind of in public. There's like five other phones directly <laughs> around him. <laughs> oh, is that real? I think this was fake. I, I would hope so. 
Yeah, he doesn't really have the hairline for it, does this he? This dude has got a mega mine hairline. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, suicide. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> yeah, wait, wait. <laughs> That's Yo. what I'm saying. So if you were never to be found, there'd be a picture of you like this yeah. three hours later. Yeah. From a gas yeah. station. <laughs> Dog, picturing the Stan account that posted this, just some fucking <laughs> like little like, girl with Cheetos all over her face, like, no, dude, you know what it is? She's on the opposite side of the stadium, and she's using the three times zoom, yeah, zoom, yeah, yeah. and then there's uh, one of her friends doing the three times zoom on her phone yeah, to get it even closer. Dude, okay. these posts. What's with the text on this? Why is the saying. text even blurry? Because you got to make it stand out amongst the others. Oh, <laughs> what, the fuck oh what riveting commentary does this 15-year-old have on a bald head? <laughs> so, this guy looks like my dad. Oh. <laughs> Man, this picture is hilarious. He's got to use this as an album cover. Oh. <laughs> it would be so good, dude. Just that square <laughs> pixel in the middle of white. By the way, Taylor is standing next to him. <gasps> oh, oh, thank God. Oh, wow. Oh, thank God. Well, it looks like they solved that case. Yeah, actually, this is how you would get found. Yeah. A bunch of fucking Stan account users. Yeah. Folding out their hand. We have to find this man. Never to be found my ass. He looks up for water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he does. Yeah. yeah. He looks like cryogenically frozen. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's some, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. <laughs> Harry's seen in a in a private submarine. <laughs> Harry, no, Harry. Yeah, you couldn't even never to be found in a fucking submersible. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. You'd yeah, still the, be found. Yeah, those, those guys, guys were trying to never be found. There, there was a headline the other day: human remains discovered. That's what I'm saying. What fucking <laughs> asshole is down there with the scuba gear, just picking up a skull? Like, oh yeah, that's him. I found you. That, that motherfucker right there. Look at that. We got teeth and everything. <laughs> hey, hey, who am I? <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Damn. Did this break Harry fans' hearts? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Harry, don't do it. I shaved my head and that's it all went downhill for me, man. Damn. All right, next one. Yeah, wait. So this guy, so he killed himself. Nah, dude. I think I, rule, I ruled that a suicide. Nah, I think Mr. Pugue shoved. Cyanide. Yeah, I think actually that's probably the best explanation. Because again, it. that's an easy time to kill someone. Yeah, and he was definitely fucking around with Minnie. Yeah, and and he's like a disgruntled, like you know, he's probably like he's fucking his boss's wife, and his yeah. boss is probably on his ass about shit too. Yeah. So he's like, I hate my boss. I'm already fucking his wife. I don't want to him. make Bryce Hall. Yeah, exactly. It's already he's already cool enough. This project is fucking stupid. He's done. Yeah. He's finished. He's finished. No, we have more work to do. What more work? He's not douchey enough. I'm putting cyanide in your coffee. Yeah. I think he, I think you put isn't isn't cyanide just tasteless? Tasteless? I don't know. Can you look it up? Should we try it? It smells like almonds. <laughs> Should we try it? Should we do hot ones with cyanide? Yeah. All right, question one. <laughs> Almond ones. <laughs> it smells like almonds? <laughs> yeah. Cyanide is sometimes bitter described almonds. as having a bitter almond smell, but does not always give off an odor, and not everyone can detect it. So, can you imagine putting cyanide in hot sauce? Yeah. You killed Jeff Goldblum live <laughs> on a fucking camera? <laughs> He's like... Yeah, I'm making music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, Jeff. Speed round. Ready? What'd you say? Oh, yeah, yeah. Luke, How do you, you know, know about that, dude? shit? You know about like Yeah, I did a bomb. project on cyanide in high school. Oh, is that when you killed your teacher? <laughs> no, he's totally fine. <laughs> JK, Don't JK, ask. JK, JK. Don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> he's totally good. He can't talk about it. <laughs> yeah. He can't think about it, but <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Poison Ones. Yeah. <laughs> poison Ones. Welcome back to Poison Ones. <laughs> All right. Miss Clarkson, we've laid out 10 wings and one of them has cyanide. Yeah. Answer honestly, and you get the antidote. 
<laughs> this is just Saw? Yeah, we should. Yeah, I guess it is kind of like Saw. Yeah. Imagine if that's who was Jigsaw the whole time. It was Sean Evans. <laughs> <laughs> Posty, in real life, you're loved, Let's you're adored. It's time to put some trauma into that brain. Yeah. Harry's new buzz cut. Let's play a game. Hey, this is Harry's Explain new buzz cut. Explain this gram. <laughs> <laughs> what type of gram is he talking about? Shit. <laughs> Sean Evans' new buzz cut. <laughs> Sean Evans' new buzz cut, and it's Harry Styles with the top of his skull lopped off. <laughs> What? <laughs> well, if Sean Evans is Jigsaw, uh, yeah, just showing yeah, off his work. Yeah. Sean Evans' new buzz cut. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> that picture of Sean is so good. It's just a normal picture of him. But just the, the look in his eyes. Yeah. He looks devious. Yeah, he does. There's cyanide on one of these wings. Yeah. I have a gun under the table. <laughs> <laughs> I have a gun. Yeah. That's the real hot ones. They're all nervous because they know there's a pistol pointed at their dicks. <laughs> hot ones. I love your work. I also have a Glock with an extended mag with hollow tips. And when they hit your body, trust me, they are hot. <laughs> Damn, look at Sean, man. Let's take a minute. Uh, can Why? we go back to Harry's a new buzz cut? Silence. I just want to know that this is Harry's new buzz cut. That is Harry's new buzz cut, and that's Sean's new buzz cut. That's, dude, that's an insane power that you can shave your head and <clears throat> people worldwide fell to their knees. Yeah, I know. David Beckham. What? David Beckham. David, David Beckham. Beckham, yeah, but he, I mean, he looked good with the buzz cut. Yeah. yeah? Yeah, I mean, we discussed that, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, Harry don't really have the hairline for it. I've always thought that he was balding. Like when he had super long hair. Yeah. That was when it was most noticeable, I thought. And I was like, this motherfucker, he's like, you know, he's like the number one, like sexiest guy in the world. But I think he's balding. Yeah. Beck, Bex had the uh, hairline for it. Yeah. You know, that's why I was able to go bald. I got the line for it. If my shit was. <laughs> That's what I'm McDonald's saying. I, I don't arches? think I could ever do it. Yeah, nah. I don't think I could ever do it because no. it just you, that would be so apparent. You and Harry would be looking crazy. That's what I'm saying. I think me, we have the same hairline, me and Harry. Yeah, I think Hair Bear's gone to Turkey. That's that's a case. That's a mystery right there. Well, maybe that's why he did it. Is Harry Styles taking a trip to Turkey? That could be it. He's for sure bald. What's that? What is that a picture of? <laughs> Man, I'm so what? dude. This is him in concert, and there were a lot of TikToks showing that like it looked like he was wearing a toupee and it was coming off. That's so wild to have all these women fans, and then you're rocking out on stage, and they go, "That motherfucker's bald." Yeah. By the way, is that Brooke? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Brooke. <laughs> it looks exactly like her. He's That's fucking weird. shit bald. All right, should we move on to the next case here? We already solved this. Harry Styles is. A Sorry, I was just head. gonna say, um, uh, what's his name? Henry Snyder. I don't hear any snide comments about this. Who? This stupid case that we just. Read. Oh yeah, okay. This guy got killed by Minnie already. Mouse. We didn't factor that in. Yeah, that's true. Minnie, crazy name. Dude, Florence Pugh killed Henry Snyder. <laughs> Florence Pugh. Um, Florence Pugh's father killed Henry Snyder. Let's do the Leatherman. Yeah. Sorry, I was just thinking about 1898. Who even knew about poison in 1898? Yeah. Can I just get a quick, what what, what did people wear in 1898? That helps me image what time period we're talking about. Oh, my God. Is this I when they made so women walk around in BDSM? Corset like corsets and, corsets ah, and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're a lady going outside, make sure you can't breathe, you can't walk. We want to reduce your lung capacity so you can't say much. They're riding bikes, though. Those are scooters, no? Are they? They look like fun, whatever it is. 
This is, oh, yeah. Look at this that. This is crazy. They made them dress like fucking barbershop quartets. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> uh, excuse me. That's pretty fire, actually. I'm sure it sucks shit to wear. Probably hot as hell. Can't 9, breathe. 9,000 layers. Dude, they got to wear those wrist straps. Yeah. This is when they got to take a take a night off. All right, you can wear four layers. Like sweatpants just like didn't exist. No. Isn't that crazy? Oh, you either were bikes. naked or you were wearing this shit. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. The next and most interesting case. A mysterious leather-clad man wandered the U.S. for decades, identity unknown. You want to take this one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait, we, oh, you, know, we, fuck. you know what we didn't follow up on? What? So we joked about the, uh, the gimp guy being named Josh, and that ended up being his real name. No way. Yeah. That's awesome. We got it right. Oh, yeah, there's a tweet about him yeah, that I saw. Look at this. Actually, maybe we should, should do a follow-up. Somerset Gimp banned from wearing a gimp suit in public and crawling and wriggling or writhing on the ground for five years. Oh, man, free my man. Yeah. You no, know, lock up my man. No, free the gimp. He didn't do nothing. No, tie up my gimp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lock him up. Actually, yeah. that's what he wants. Yeah, str- yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wrap up my gimp. Yeah. Look at that smug smile. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Evil Sean Evans. Yo, gimp's new buzz cut. <laughs> gimp's new buzz cut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, that's such a funny punishment. All right, no writhing on the ground for five years. You're banned. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. It's my passion. (laughs) Joshua Hunt, a self-employed gardener from Cleaverham, North Somerset, had been linked by police to 25 incidents across the county over the past... Clavram. Over the past five years. And he no longer can do it. Where is... Can you... you Point me where North no, Somerset perhaps. is. We talk. Are we talking about the North. North Somerset. Are we in North Somerset? What's the next? <coughs> oh, it's near Bristol. Oh, it's south. No, it's south. Yeah, next to Cardiff. Yeah, okay, we're so- not like those people from Wales, fucking sheep in that. Yeah, we're from. We're Southy. Okay, let's let's do this one because it's it's uh connected. Yeah. Maybe. So back to the mysterious case of the Leatherman. The Leatherman was a particular vagabond who was famous for wearing his handmade leather clothes and traveled an annual route between the Connecticut River and the Hudson River, roughly from eighteen fifty seven to eighteen eighty nine. His repeating voyage took him to certain towns in western Connecticut and eastern New York, and he would return to each town every 34 to 36 days. Living in rock shelters, he stopped at towns along his 365-mile loop for food and supplies. It was unclear what he did for work. One shopkeeper kept a record of his usual store order. One loaf of bread, a can of Somerset sardines. No, it's just a can of sardines. Yeah. One pound of fancy crackers, a pie, two quarts of coffee, one gill of brandy, and a bottle of beer. You mean, did you mean Summerstrom? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. An article from the Burlington Free Press dated April 7th, 1870, refers to him as the, quote, leather-clad man and states that he rarely spoke and that when people addressed him, he would simply speak in monosyllables. What does that mean? What's a monosyllable? Is that one word answer? Ah. Oh. E. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Yeah. That's hard as hell. Hmm. Uh. Ah. A word consisting of only one syllable. Yeah. So oh, no. Yes so you no could answers. say yes, no. Okay. Jump, buy, heat, sure cough you could say a lot actually also he spoke like a caveman yeah jizz cum boobs 
Well, I'm just saying. Does it balls come? Or is it? Yeah. Or is it come? Fart. Fart. Um. Yeah. Puss. Dick butt. Uh. Well, you can say dick. Yeah. Dick butt. Cold. Hungry. Hungry? No, that doesn't count. That's two syllables. Oh, yeah. Hung. Hung. <laughs> Hung. 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 Dick. Suck. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Penis. Penis. Blow. Need. To. Bust. <laughs> Six saying sentences. Hi. <laughs> I very horny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> According to rumors, I was- bust <laughs> quick <laughs> on face <laughs> now. Please. Please. I I'm about to bust. <laughs> I about <laughs> to bust. I love the way you talk in monosyllables. <laughs> I come. <laughs> oh. No, no. <laughs> Fat nut. According to rumors, he was from Picardy, France. Even though he was fluent in French, he communicated mostly with grunts and gestures. <laughs> Rarely using the little English that he knew. When asked about his background, he would abruptly end the conversation. Damn. That's crazy. Yeah, so what's up with your background, by no, the way? No. Hey, bus. Now, where are you from? <laughs> 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 Just out of there. <laughs> Dips. Never to be found. Yeah, never to be found. Never <laughs> to be found. Never to be found again. <clears throat> the, the Connecticut Humane Society had him arrested and hospitalized in 1888, which re- resulted in a diagnosis of sane except for an emotional affliction. What the fuck disease is that? Sane except for an emotional affliction? What is an emotional affliction? I feel like that's everyone nowadays. Can you, you know? look up the etymology of Emotional affliction? Just like broken hearted or something? Is that what that means? Is that like an evolution of heretic? <clears throat> Mental affliction. That just means you have like a fatigue, guilt, and aggression. <laughs> so he's depressed? <laughs> yeah, he's saying he's cool. He's sane, except for... He's just depressed. He's just like, yeah. Kind it's of kind of a bad vibe. Yeah, bad vibe. <laughs> After which he was released as he had money and desired freedom. Upon Even upon his death from cancer in 1889, the Leatherman's true identity <clears throat> remained unknown and is still a mystery to this day. Who was the Leatherman and why did he remain clad in leather and removed from society? Where did he get his money to purchase food and survive blizzards and the harsh winters? I think he was a rich kid. Who wanted to reject his awesome upbringing? So he came up with this art project to dedicate his life to, and no one gave a shit about it. Oh, okay. That's that's yeah. Oh, this is a picture of him. Yeah. My man, punch in. I take it back. He does, he does not I take it back. He might be yeah, the no. first one to discover meth. You think that's what it is? I think that's how he got back and forth on those 365 yeah. miles. Yeah, yeah, he's just going on quests. And that's why he can only speak in one word. They're yeah. like, are you okay? He's like, copper. <laughs> copper. Oh, that's two. <laughs> ca, 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 <laughs> per, Matt, food, now. That dude's got some, that dude's got some pies Ice. for hands, man. Ice. Smoke. Yeah, smoke. Snort. Pook. Pook. In High. pipe. High. The Leatherman Circuit. They should turn this into a Formula One race. <laughs> the Leatherman We're circuit. here at the lovely Leatherman <laughs> Circuit this afternoon for a riveting race. 365 miles of flat-out action. 
<laughs> Once traversed by one of the most disgusting men in history, we are back with the most vile and evil in motorsport. And then they all have to wear that yeah. in the cars. Yeah. 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 Look at this dude. <laughs> He's coming out of the forest like, I need to bust. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bus time. Bus time. Bus time. Yeah, bus time. It's busting time. <laughs> Harry's new buzz cut. What'd you say? Harry's new buzz cut. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, this guy is a shaman. What the fuck? <laughs> they let this guy in a store? Yeah, seriously. What is this? Now people are redoing his route, dressing like him, and trying to live that life. No, I think they're on meth, too. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> Literally and figuratively, they're on second meth. Damn. Meth 2.0. I kind of want to do his route. Run it? Yeah, run it. Yeah. The Leatherman's Marathon? Run it. Sorry, man. I'm just laughing at how uh, even... In 2023, you can look like the Leatherman and still get coffee. Yeah. You're still going to Starbucks looking like that. Yeah, yeah, Let me get a black coffee. <laughs> After nine days and 343 miles on Saturday, 23rd of March 1st, on, what? The 23rd of March, I completed a loop on foot back to where I had started at the grave of an unknown vagabond. Oh, no. he, really? Wow. 300 miles in nine, 340 miles in nine days. What is that per day? Let's do some tit math here. If it's 300 divided, 40 by, divided nine, by nine, that would be about like 30 some per day. 36, 38. Yeah. Wow. Pretty close. Yeah. Well, cause three times three is nine. That's pretty solid. 40 miles a day. Yeah. Dude had to be on meth for sure. No shot. Cause even Coke, like he, he, Coke wears out. Yeah. Like if he, if he, even if he was getting, you know, cocaine dabbled coffee, that's not enough. Yeah, but I think meth does the same thing. Short lived. How can what's you look a that up? What's a drug that like la like PCP or some shit? That's what I'm thinking. Something that like lasts a while. Yeah. How what's the how long does PCP work in your body? <laughs> I'm trying to run a marathon. <laughs> Do they drug test for like the Iron Man and no. stuff? Oh, you could just fully load up. Yeah, I think you would die. I think your heart would explode. Oh, just a little of PCP? I don't know if PCP like energizes you. It probably does actually. The yeah. amount of like naked dudes on the street that yeah. are like lifting up cars and stuff like that. That's hilarious. Google trying to tell me what drugs to take. Help is available. Uh no one on from that hotline can help me punch through this fence right now. <laughs> how yeah, how long does it last in your body? Maybe, um, yeah. Search, yeah, how long does P, or search Reddit afterwards. Afterwards? Afterwards? Afterwards. No, man. Recovering PCP addict. PCP high, there we go. How does it feel? Mm, Ket doesn't exist in America, you unlucky fucks. It's everywhere in the UK. This is old. To me, it feels like getting ultimately blackout drunk, yet you are not nauseous and it does not affect negatively. It does not affect you negatively in any way. <laughs> oh, we should okay. do this. Yeah, shit. yeah. <laughs> I've tried DXM and it made me horribly nauseous and throw up for hours and see little toy knives in my vision. <laughs> There's a Venn diagram with its effects, and if you try different analogs of PCP, they all have more or less attributes of these. I've tried three. Okay, well, what the fuck are we doing? This is not related. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just I'm just wanting to know. Yeah, maybe maybe this guy, maybe Leatherman was just, you know, a displaced French man and athletic. I think there are dudes like this that exist today. Yeah. There are people, I know like my my parents met one. Like, you know that do like the Appalachian Trail just over and over. They just live on it. They go back and forth. What? Yeah. Like, they just live, they hike every single day, and they live out in the mountains. How do they eat? They stop in the towns and buy, oh. buy you know, a loaf of bread and, and a coffee. can of sardines yeah, and, and okay. a pound of crackers. But they just, that's what they do. Uh. So there's people that do this shit now. 
Okay. I don't know if they're dressed in leather, but there's probably one guy that does that. Maybe the leather. Could leather help you survive a harsh winter? Yeah, definitely. It's yeah, because, yeah. Yeah, leather is warm. Yeah. Yeah, when you sit on a leather like couch. Insulated too. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Normally it's got like. Burn your fucking ass getting into a leather seat in the summer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> well. This guy's lame though. <laughs> Like, find your own shit. You know what I mean? Like, you can be your own version of weird. Don't be the Leatherman. He already did that, you know? <laughs> this guy's lame, though. <laughs> Damn. All right. What's next? You want to do... The uh, human Z. Uh, All right, uh, folks. Well, we still have a lot of cases left. We cracked a few good ones, but we have more to crack. We have more to crack, and we're cracking and in the bonus. smoke crack as well in the bonus. Yep, that's a crack pipe. So Harry's new buzz cut. And uh, Harry's new buzz cut to you. Harry's new buzz cut. Mm-hmm. Harry's new buzz cut. Harry's new that's buzz Harry's cut. That's Harry's new buzz cut. <laughs> it was Harry Styles the whole yeah. time. Yeah. Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Harry. Harry. Um, as always, you can go to teamgstudios.tv to see the extended version of this where we're going to jump into right now. Yeah. Good. Goodbye and good riddance. Harry's new buzz cut. Happy Harry's new buzz cut to you as well. <laughs> Happy Harry's new buzz cut. <laughs> Happy Harry's new buzz cut. Are you observing? I'm observing. Harry's new buzz cut? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I've heard that's a bank holiday now. I'm in mourning. <laughs> I'm Harry's Harry. new buzz cut. <laughs> All right. Harry's new buzz cut. Harry's new buzz cut. Coming up in the special extended version. <laughs> that is Joe Biden, man. Have you ever smelled mink urine? No. Dude, it's irresistible. <laughs> yeah, they don't age well, do they? No. The humanities? No, you got to kill them young. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See it all only on TMGstudios.tv. Sign up today.